Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Particle Tracing for Fluid Flows and today we will be talking about a few post-processing steps. Those are unique to Particle Tracing module. In Particle Tracing module, we basically solve for particle dynamics under a definite force field and this is basically a kind of transient problem where we want to extract time information and time information means how the number of particles are changing, how their velocities are changing with respect to time. Suppose we have this solution space and I want to know what is happening at a part of the solution space, say the upper part. So with respect to time, I want to know how many particles are there at different time steps in this upper zone and we may also want to know how many particles are crossing this border line with respect to time. That means time information and particle information and their correlation. And those things are necessary in order to study a scientific or a physical problem. So let us just see the problem initially. So we have done a simple modeling where you can see an arbitrary force in the positive y direction is given. So what will happen? Uh, the particles will be taken to the upward direction because of this force. And initially we have released the particles in this zone randomly. Randomly means we have 100 particles. So 100 particles can start from any position but only here because the release zone is chosen as the lower zone and the upper zone there is no particle initially so if we look at the solution i have already simulated so if we go to particle trajectory so how it is going at t equal to zero time the particles were here and as we move you can see the particles are crossing this barrier and as time progresses more and more particle goes to the upper zone now we want to accurately calculate with respect to time how many particles are crossing this barrier and also if you want to know about the information of particle positions. So about the particle positions I have already talked about. However, I will uh, talk once more. So if you want to know the particle coordinates then what you have to do is you have to go to the particle trajectories and you have to right click on it and then you go to add if you yeah sorry if we come to particle trajectories and then if we go to add data to export then we export the data say we save it data particle and it is better to export as a csv file because you then you can see the columns appropriately now if we go this is the data which is saved and if you see you have the information of the coordinates of all the particles you see we had 100 particles so there are 100 particles the index is showing 108 because it started from i'll show you it started from 9 that's why it is 108 that means total 100 particles and this color code represents certain say it can represent velocity vector or something else we have not changed the size of the particles and that's why all the particles are of similar radius but if you if you if you consider a distribution of particles then against all the particle you can also see the radius now from here this is a particular time information so this time information is if you see here, if we go to particle trajectory, this is at 0 0.04 second. So you can change the time and you can export data at different time. So once you have data of, of particle positions at different time, then you can do your post processing and you can extract information of particle locations at different point of time. And you can also, you, you can also calculate the locus of the particle and whatever you want. So there should be another post processing or data handling and those kind of data handling uh, is possible with Excel 
nowadays the pandas is popular in you can use pandas to post process your data now we want to know about the flux how many particles are crossing this barrier for that what you can we can do i have already done but i will do it again so we can take surface average integration and then we choose this surface average and before that i will show you what are the options available in particle tracing so if you go here and then go to particle tracing for fluid flows and then you go to particle statistics you can see there are many options available like this is total number of particles in selections this is particle index this is particle release feature we will be talking about all these features in a separate video but today we will only be talking about calculating number density and for that what parameter we need to use we need to use this one apt.pcnt1.n selection this represents total number of particles in selection that means wherever we are selecting the space it will calculate so let us put this expression here and the selection is this zone and then if we just calculate on evaluate so you can see with respect to time it is calculating the particle number so if you see here initially there were zero particles then uh, at 0 0.01 second seven particles that means seven particles have crossed this particular barrier at 0 0.01 second and at 0 0.02 total 18 particles are there that means uh, in this time interval you have 18 minus 7 that is 11 particles have crossed so from this data you can actually have the information about the flux so i just plotted the number so you can see this is how the number of particles which are crossing this is the cumulative number of particles which are crossing the barrier and after 0 0.05 second all the particles are here and that is why you don't see any change so what happens at 0 0.05 second so let us just see from the particle trajectory so you see at 0 0.04 second there are few particles in the lower zone but when you go to 0 0.05 all the 100 particles are here and from the graph itself you can see at 0 0.05 all the particles are already here so there is no scope of having more particles so this is how you can actually see how many particles are crossing this particular positions so if you want to calculate flux around a particular surface or line so this selection will be very much important there are other post processing options as well so we will create another video on the post processing options but meanwhile you can try having the data files of the coordinates where we have already shown in the particle trajectory if you go to particle trajectory and you can export the data you will have the information of the coordinates from here you will have the information of number of particles that is at to uh, certain zone so those two informations will be sufficient to go ahead with your post processing and in our upcoming video whatever we are going to talk about that will again help you so do subscribe to this channel so whenever we upload a video you get an information about that as a notification so today i stop here we'll be continuing thank you